So the French newspapers then uh, largely headlining on the riots, aren't they, that uh, occurred in the suburbs of uh, Trappe over the weekend? Yes, Stuart. Let's take a look at the front page of the left-wing newspaper Libération. It says that things have heated up in the banlieue. As you know, the story is that a woman got arrested by police officers to control her ID. She was wearing the full veil. And as you know, uh, wearing the full veil in France has been banned since 2011. So authorities say that her husband got really violent and tried to strangle one of the officers. She says that's completely wrong. Anyway, the newspaper has interviewed the head of AC Le Feu, which is an association that was created after the riots that occurred back in 2005. And basically what he's saying is that it's a bitter reminder. I quote, nowadays you're excluded from society because you have a beard or because you wear an extra piece of cloth. It contributes to the rise of racism in France. Dialogue between politicians and the people no longer exists, he says. And the socialist government has not kept it, its promise in helping the suburbs, the French suburbs. Let's take a look at the editorial now of Libération. It blames politicians from the right and also from the left, as you know, from the right, because Sarkozy, um, you know, from 2007 until last year, uh, was accused of having harsh policies on uh, security. And the problem is that the Bollywood population has indeed been forgotten. Unemployment is soaring in the Bollywood. It's twice as high as anywhere else in France, says the paper. Let's take a look at L'Opinion, which is a right-wing newspaper this time. It's got a totally different take on this story. Um, it says that it shows that there's an identity crisis in France. Secularism is too difficult to stick to 100% in France, especially now when uh, the Muslims have started uh, fasting for the Ramadan as the heat is not really helping, the summer heat, um, it's not helping people calm down. Um, Le Figaro also uh, has similar views. It addresses uh, François Hollande's government and it sleekily says um, you see, you criticised uh, the right for not improving the situation in the Bollywood. Well, look at you now. You're faced with the same issues as the previous right-wing government, and you're not doing a much better job, it says. Whether you want it or not, uh, this could be seen as a caricature, but security issues are indeed linked to immigration and to uh, integration, says the paper. So there you go. That's all the French papers looking back at uh, what happened there over the weekend. They're also looking forward to an upcoming uh, event. This is Pope Francis, uh, expected in Rio de Janeiro later. His first major overseas trip, isn't it? Absolutely. And it's made the front page of Le Figaro. It's a week-long trip to Brazil. And it's the world's um, largest Roman Catholic country. As you know, nearly two million young Catholics are expected to flock to the beaches of Rio to see Papa Francesco. Mm -hmm. Now, um, in Brazil, n some 123 million um, people are Catholic, but that number has tumbled over the past 30 years. It's dropped more than 20%. Why is that? Now, according to Le Figaro, it's because many are disillusioned by the church. Um, they've given up their faith in the country where favelas are mushrooming everywhere and where, you know, recent riots have just showed that the population is fed up with the current uh, situation with the politicians and with rampant corruption. On the other hand, you've got the rise of evangelism. As believers are much closer to the people, according to the paper, they knock on people's doors, uh, they uh, insist on promoting social aid, for example, they set up temples between two shabby bars, you know, they really are present amongst the population. And that's something that the Catholic Church needs to, to deal with. The Pope's been to Brazil lots of times before. Anything different this time around? Well, this time, around according to La Croix there you go it's on the front page there there's going to be no bulletproof proof Pope Mobile, um, Francis wants to be an unostentatious Pope. He wants to keep it low key, no bling, no glam. He just wants to be a religious leader ready to serve the poor. And unlike his predecessor, Benedict the Sixteenth, Francis is expected to visit a favela in northern Rio, uh, so poor and so notorious for violence that it's been dubbed once the Gaza Strip. Now, uh, it just shows that the Francis era is completely different to uh, the predecessor. Um, now we can talk about something completely different. Mm. Yes, we're going to talk about the Tour de France, aren't we? Because it's a big, big story here in Paris and we've only got 30 seconds or so left, so let's go straight on to the Tour de France and All mention right. it because you can't not mention the Tour de France today. No way, it's been a huge <laughs> historic event, according to L'Equipe, that's dedicated 10 
pages, no wow. less than 10 pages <laughs> on this huge event. And as you can see on the front page there, Chris Froome, who finished with more than four minutes ahead of uh, his closest rival on average. He's 28 years old and he crossed the final uh, finish line uh, on the famous Champs-Élysées yesterday with thousands of fans who came from all over the world, mainly from uh, the UK, to mm -hmm. cheer him on. Indeed they did. Aurore, thank you very much. Of course we were cheering him on very slightly as well. Aurore <laughs> Dupuis would be uh, Fresh Papers here on France Fan Cap.